Hello fans, collectors, investors, welcome back to Iconic Baseball. I'm Iconic Al, and if you've been watching this channel for any length of time, you know what's coming. We are at number two on my countdown. This is my list of the 100 greatest and most iconic ball players in baseball history. We are talking today about the prototypical five-tool player, his combination of power, speed, and defensive prowess has and will never be duplicated. An argument can be made that this man is the greatest all-around ball player in baseball history. I am honored to introduce the greatest living ball player on planet Earth, the Say Hey Kid, the incomparable Willie Mays. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out with the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and cracker jack. I don't care if I never get back. Let me root, root, root for the home team. If they don't win, it's a shame. For it's one, two, three strikes, you're out at the old ball game. Say Willie, say hey, say who? Swinging at the plate, say hey, say who? Say Willie, that giant kid is great. When he hits the ball, it's long gone man. Hits it farther than camp he can. Swings the bats like a little lead pipe. When they reach the ball, it's overripe. Say hey, say who? Say Willie, say hey, say who? Swing it at the plate, say hey, say who? Say Willie, that giant kid is great. He runs the bases like a choo choo train. Swings around the second like an aeroplane. His cap flies off when he passes third. And he heads home like an eagle bird. Say hey, say who? Say Willie, say hey, say who? Swinging at the plate, say hey. Born in 1931 in Westfield, Alabama, Willie Howard Mays would go on to become the greatest all-around ball player in baseball history. He was the complete package. His greatness cannot be overstated. During his long, prolific, and productive career with the New York Giants and the San Francisco Giants, he compiled a staggering 156.1 war. He hit 301 for a career with a 384 on base percentage. He compiled 3,293 career hits, hit an amazing 660 home runs, adding 525 doubles, stealing 338 bases. The man drove in 1,909 runs, scored 2,068 runs. He won a batting title, two MVP awards. His 12 Gold Glove awards established him as the greatest center fielder of his time and he was an all-star 24 times. The remarkable impact he had on the game is shown clearly in his war numbers. In 1954, a 10.5 war, 1958, a 10.2 war, 1962, a 10.5 war, 1963, 10.6, 1964, 11 war, and 1965, an 11.2 war. Just an amazing display of peak ability. If we're talking about Willie Mays and iconic moments, you have to mention the catch. The iconic defensive play he made in game one of the 1954 World Series. Just an amazing play with his back to the field, over the shoulder catch, and then an amazing twirling throw back to the infield. Um, what can you say? It just encapsulates how great of an outfielder he was. And uh, he would lead his team to the 1954 World Series championship that year. Before we jump into my Willie Mays collection, I'm extremely honored to be joined by one of my good hobby friends from YouTube. I had the pleasure of meeting and hanging out with him at the last couple nationals, and he has built an amazing collection of Willie Mays cards. Without any further ado, Adam from Vintage Sanctuary. Hey guys, I am Adam from the Vintage Sanctuary. And when Alan reached out to me, Alan from Iconic Baseball, and asked if I would show some of my favorite Willie Mays cards for his epic countdown video on Willie Mays. Hey, he hasn't even created it yet, I don't think, but I am confident it will be epic. I am delighted to be involved. I am honored. I have really been thoroughly enjoying his countdown. I think I've seen all of them so far. The 98, and now we're down to the last couple. 
And so I am going to show you my top six base cards of Willie Mays because I only have six. However, those six really set me up for a Topps Willie Mays run, which I hope to complete at some time, no rush, maybe within the next few years. I would also love to have his Bowman run, but I don't have any of his Bowman cards yet. And that 1951 Bowman plus the 52 could kind of be some stoppers, but it's fun to dream. We'll see how the journey goes. Without further ado, let me turn this camera around and show you, I'll go in reverse chronological order, the six top space cards of Willie Mays, all so glorious that I have in my collection at this point in time. So let's do it. All right, so reverse chronological order. From the 2022 National, I picked up the 1969 Topps Willie Mays. Such a nice, simple and clean design. I was so stoked to get that card. Of course, I was so stoked to get all these cards. And now I also got this one at the 2022 National. This is my only 1965 Topps card. But if you're only gonna have one, I say this is a pretty darn nice one to have. And look at how sweet this one is. And of course, I hope to have more 1965 Topps cards, but there is no rush. No rush, these things take time. So there we've got, uh, from the 60s, the 69 Topps Willie Mays base card and the 64. And now, one more from the 60s. This was an eBay purchase, 64 Topps and a 5.5. I mean, to me, I am always so stoked, so stoked when I can add a Willie Mays card. Well, so stoked when I can add <laughs> any card that I'm stoked about, which is pretty much every card I get because I only buy cards I'm stoked about. So therefore, I am so stoked. Now, the card I am about to show you was a PSA 2.5 with a little blemish that turned out to be on the holder. So I crossed it over to SGC just to see if that blemish was on the card or the holder. SGC bumped it up to a three on their grading scale. I mean, talk about the definition <laughs> of absolutely glorious. This card is so nice for the grade. This might be, uh, you know, the nicest smile. I know this image is also used on his uh, 55 tops as well as his 56 tops, but it's one heck of an image, that is for sure. And I love the backs. I absolutely love the backs. Absolutely love the backs of the uh, 54 tops. And now from here, I tell you the next two, you know, as far as what is the favorite Willie Mays card of my collection, I could say it's the 54. That card is so glorious. I could also say it's this one. This card is, to me, uh, one of the most, you know, significant vintage cards in the hobby. It's one of the few action shots from 53 tops. It's a high number. It's Willie Mays, his famous basket catch. I mean, this card to me, I know it's kind of a spendy card, but I actually think it's undervalued. But I guess I probably think hey, if I like a card and I buy it, <laughs> I probably think it's undervalued or at least I was willing to spend, you know, spend the money on it uh, based on today's market. So it has value to me, that's for sure. Now, the one I'm going to show, the last one, this is definitely my favorite, although the, although the two you're looking at right now, I mean, those are just right up there. These cards are so glorious. This one I got at the 22 National, 20. Uh, 22 National, my first National. It was my big pickup. It was in a PSA Authentic, not Authentic Altered, just Authentic. I couldn't figure out what was wrong with it. Sent it to SGC after I had owned it for several months. And lo and behold, nothing was wrong with it. Oh, the purple. And this card, no snowing, no wrinkles, no crinkles. Well, it's got a little indentation or whatever there, kind of by my thumb. But I mean, you know, wow. The way it presents, yeah, it's off center, but wow, <laughs> is it sharp. 
And is it clean and, and is it vibrant? So this, this is my dream card right here for sure. Little factory kind of wrinkle here that's just on the back. This is my grail. This is actually my grail card, the 52 Tops Willie Mays. And then the 53 I'll say is a dream card. Those are two of the favorite cards in my collection. There's lots of cards I could call favorites. The 52 Tops Willie Mays, definitely my favorite. Let me turn this camera around. Thank you everyone for sharing in my joy. I don't wanna make this too long. It's going to be embedded into Alan's epic video. So Alan, thank you for having me. Now everyone, get back to Alan's video and I hope you have a wonderful time over there and share in his joy as he uh, moves us through Willie Mays and shows us his epic items. Take care, my collecting friends. Thank you so much, Adam, for that wonderful cameo. You did not disappoint, my friend. For anyone that's unaware of Adam's channel, it is Vintage Sanctuary, so be sure to check him out. He has such a unique and genuine passion for collecting. So, Vintage Sanctuary. All right, on to my items for Mays. Thankfully, there's no overlap between Adam's Mays collection and mine. They're, mine are all different from his, so that's kind of cool. Um, let's start from the edges and move to the center here. This is the 1961 Topps Willie Mays, one that doesn't get a lot of love in the hobby. The 61 Topps design is kind of unremarkable, in my opinion, but the image is what kind of sets it apart to me. Now, this is the only Mays image in his entire run where he isn't wearing a hat. And I think it makes that portrait hit a little bit harder. It's kind of a candid, unguarded expression uh, on Maze's face. And, and being without a hat, I think it really shows the man. Uh, it looks kind of contemplative. Uh, I'm not sure, you know, if there's a backstory. Did someone just say something? Or is the sun a little bit too bright? I'm not sure, but I really feel like I can see Willie Mays in this card, so that's why I like it. Uh, a lot of people don't like this card. I really like it. Uh, it's one that I've had for a long time because I really feel like I can see Willie Mays here. Um, but it's just a really nice example of the card. It's in a PSA 5.5. Nice, clean, crisp example. And it's my only 61 Tops card in my collection. Okay, let's start from the other edge. This is my Maze Relic. This is a 2001 release, Upper Deck Legends, Legendary Lumber. And this is a really quite an affordable card. Uh, the last I checked, this was like a $30 card. And uh, this comes from that 2001 early Relic period where sure enough, it says from an actual MLB game. So this is sort of verified to be actual lumber from a Willie Mays game used bat, which is pretty cool. And the fact that these are still somewhat affordable at 30 bucks or so, I think that's a pretty good buy. Couldn't argue with that price. And it's just a nice presenting card from that early relic period. Okay, moving to now my really, my most favorite maze items. The 1954 Bowman, which again, this image, I believe is the same smiling image that's used on the 54 tops and I think the 55 tops as well. This is just a zoomed out image where you can see his full body. But 1954 was significant for Mays in many ways. This was the year he made the famous catch. It was also a year that the uh, New York Giants won the World Series. It was also his first MVP season. So uh, I love having a 54 Willie Mays for all those reasons. And it's my only 54 Bowman card in my collection. So it just checks a lot of boxes for me. It's also quite a bit more affordable than his Topps releases from that time period. But just a beautiful card and a PSA 3. But really, how can you not love a 1954 Bowman Maze? Just a great early career release. All right, moving on. This one might actually be my favorite Willie Mays card, even though it isn't playing days. This is a 1995 Upper Deck Autograph that uh, I'm actually, I forget whether this was kind of a pack pulled release or whether it was more of a redemption, but this was done through Upper Deck and there was a small set called 1995 Upper Deck Autographs and it featured players like Roger Clemens and I think Reggie Jackson was in the set. Um, 
but this was done through Upper Deck, so you, you can be sure that it's authentic. It has that hologram verifying it's, it's Upper Deck authenticated. And it also comes with one of these cards, matching cards that goes along with that hologram. So you know it's legit, which is, you know, for maze autographs, you better be sure because there's so many fake maze autographs out there. One of the most forged autographs in the hobby. So if you're out there in the maze autograph market, you gotta be careful. You gotta make sure you're buying something where you're pretty sure of authenticity. This is one that I will liberate from this one screw case very soon. And I plan to have it dual uh, graded by PSA because I think it has high grade potential, both the card itself and the autograph. So very hopeful that this will uh, score well with PSA, which would make it even more significant than it already is. But definitely a beautiful uh, early career pose from Mays uh, with the New York Giants and really a flawless autograph on there. And so even though it is a more modern card, you have the full career stats on the back, and it's just such a definitive release in my mind. It's, it's one of my favorite cards of May's period. So very honored to have that. One that I've probably had for 25 years. Um, just love it. And then moving on along those same lines with autographs, just a really nice example of a May's signed baseball. Again, you have to be very careful when you're buying May's signed anything because forgeries are so prevalent. One piece of advice, try to steer clear of anything with the Maze Say Hey hologram on it, because many of those are not genuine. This one has been obviously encapsulated by Beckett and certified. This is on a William White National League Baseball, but just a really nice sweet spot example. There is variability in Maze's autograph. It has changed quite a bit over his lifetime. Here's an example of a secondary maze ball that I have that looks different. I mean, the shape, the flow, I mean, it, the maze portion looks very similar, but you can see how the first part of that autograph looks quite different. And this has been certified by Beckett as well. So these are both authentic. Just because they look different doesn't mean one of them is not legit. So keep that in mind. But uh, yeah, there are two examples of maze that look quite different. All right, that is a little crash course on maze autographs. Thank you so much for continuing to join me on this countdown, this marathon through baseball history. I think it's pretty obvious who's coming next, but I'll leave you in suspense for another couple weeks. Until then, keep collecting and stay iconic.